Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. So the format that I am doing this reading for you is going to be a little bit different from all the other signs. Okay, so with all the other signs, what I've done is um, I pulled out four important messages for them, but I feel like for you it's better to, um, I think you might like the format better if it's not structure based on those four messages, but rather we're going through the different houses and we're trying to, you know, um, get predictions in terms of what's coming in for you and how that's going to affect you and how you can navigate the energies. I feel like that's a little bit more useful to your taste. Um, so the first thing that I want to start out with is, uh, first of all, I wish you all a very wonderful, uh, happy birthday. So for those celebrating the end of April, I do wish you all the best. Um, and then, you know, uh, happy early birthday for those of you who are celebrating in May, okay? Um, before we go further, um, all, this, all the cards, the majority of the cards that are in front of me, they're in the suit of swords and in the suit of fire. So there's very, very little uh, pentacle suit uh, coming out here. And basically what that means is, unfortunately, I feel like you're going to be a little bit outside of your element this month. What does that mean? Well, the fire energy deals with activity. It deals with initiative. It deals with energy. It deals with a really, really rapid pace. Um, and it might not be entirely to your liking. The suit of swords deals with mental energy. It deals with making connection, communication. And if you're not getting it, then you're going to be left behind. So... The, the main overriding, overarching energy that I'm feeling for you is pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Somebody is telling you, you need to hurry up. You need to pick up the pace. And you're going to get a little bit flustered and you're going to get a little bit annoyed. And you're going to feel as if you are underperforming. Okay? So coming into the beginning of this month, you want to be ready. And you want to act and you want to... Get yourself, like, you need to pick up the pace. You need to act at a faster pace. And you need to be really, really focused to get you where you need to go and to make decisions in, like, a split second. And you need to get things done in a very swift and very decisive manner. So that's going to be crucial for you. What I feel happening is... Um, I feel like there was a deal or some situation that fell through the cracks. Something that you could have handled back in the month of March. But for whatever reason, he said, she said, too many people got involved. Too many words got exchanged. And then the, the, the deal or the situation kind of fell apart. So if it's a deal, I feel like it's a significant deal. Lots of money involved. Um, potential for, you know... Um, the client to be like a long-term client so it's not just not being able to close the deal but it's also like losing the faith and the the trust of that customer or that client and then I also feel a situation where everything was going swimmingly well and then somebody kind of um threw a wrench in the works and then the 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 ideal situation kind of fell apart and I feel like it was social in nature, and it's also professional in nature. So with the social interaction, everything was going swimmingly well. And then one person's like, oh, I don't want to do that. And then everybody was like, okay, well, if that person doesn't want to do that, then I'm out as well. So it's like everyone opted in. One person decided to opt out, and then everyone opted out. So they were getting cold feet. Or the situation, you thought it was going to go one way, and then there was just, just this major reversal at, this, at like a, a very crucial period of time, or it happened really fast. It was unintended, or it was just, you know, unanticipated, and then you're kind of left wondering what exactly happened. So there were a lot of just the energy was very unpredictable for you guys in the month of March. It was very new, it happened really, really fast, and you were kind of forced to roll with the punches. You were kind of forced to just, you know, um, accept the fact that it's going to be very unpredictable. You just need to, you know, be flexible. So I feel like coming into the month of April, 
you're realizing at least that, you know, things are going to be really unpredictable. I'm just going to go with the flow and I'm just going to, you know, try to blend in. Okay. And so what's happening here? I feel like in the work environment, there is a person here. Um, I see some of you, honestly, a little bit distracted. And I see you doing your work without a sense of urgency. So that means you have your routine. You have your breaks. You have, you know, a time that you allow for yourself to finish a specific task. And the people around you, it seems like the environment is very kinetic. Lots of things are happening. Lots of projects are happening simultaneously. Lots of people are doing many, many things like multitasking. And they're looking at you kind of like doing things in your own manner, in your own pace. And they're telling you, pick up the pace. They're telling you, why aren't you chipping in to help us? And they're also telling you, you know, why are you doing things without a sense of urgency at all? And so I wish I could say, like, you know, don't let this get to you. But I feel like the energy is very nonverbal. So they might also be feeling it, but they're not going to tell you. If you see, if you feel the, um, if you feel like the energy is really tense, you want to observe and you want to kind of um, look outside of yourself and, and, you know, try to see what is everybody doing? Is there anything that I can do differently? Is there anything I can do to chip in to help? And can I work with more of a sense of urgency? Because I feel like you're distracted and I feel like you're being pulled in multiple directions too. And in order for you to find your center, you just kind of have to tune people out, right? And that's what you're doing. But in the process, it's almost like things are not getting done in a timely manner. And the people around you, they're trying to get things done. Um, I'm also feeling this energy kind of um, seeping into, you know, your, your career sector. Where it just seems to me as if... It just feels to me as if you're reassessing whether or not this is the right career path. You're reassessing whether or not you're in the right place. I do feel um, financially, it, it, it seems as if based on, you know, your experiences, based on your education, based on everything that you have worked really hard towards, where you are right now, you feel like you're underpaid and you feel like it's a struggle to make ends meet and you feel like it's a struggle to keep going. So you're trying to ask yourself, do I continue down this route or should I change sectors? Should I change careers? Should I get myself into a position where I can get paid more? And so there are a lot of questions here regarding, is this the right work environment for me? You feel energetically that it's not. And then the ultimate question here is, is this the right place for me to be? Because financially, it seems like it's not stable enough. So you have these questions kind of looming over you for the month of um, April. And keep in mind, we are dealing with a Mercury retrograde in the month of April. And so these questions, definitely, it's good to, you know, mull them over, to think them over. Should you quit your job in the midst of a Mercury retrograde cycle? No. You're not going to be uh, thinking right. And you're not going to be, you know, looking at a situation with enough clarity for you to make up your mind. But these are important things that are coming out for you to re-examine. Okay? I feel like some of you are in a uh, situation, like a career track, where you are dealing with a lot of children. And the work is emotionally draining. It's emotionally draining, possibly even physically draining, and it's affecting your health. And then others of you are dealing with people that have this immense sense of entitlement. Do this, do that. You know, I'm a paying customer. You need to obey me, and you need to be at my beck and call. You need to bend over backwards for me. And you're like, I'm not having that. So I feel like you're under a lot of demands from other people. And you're starting to kind of um, reassess that, you know, maybe this isn't the career track for me. Maybe this isn't where I'm meant to be long term. 
and that's fine. But, you know, go through the process, mull it over, just don't act on it right now. Um, what I'm also sensing is uh, they're saying do things with more of a sense of urgency, okay? So in the most loving way possible, I feel like they're telling you, you know, quicken up the pace, pick up the pace. If you don't pick up the, up the pace, other people are going to have to pick up your slack. And so it doesn't create a harmonious environment when other people feel that way. And I'm also sensing as well on the flip side of that, some of you are going to have to pick up other people's slack and you're not happy about it either. So it's a two-way street. If you're finding yourself on the slower end, definitely be a little bit more vigilant about what you're doing so that other people don't have causes of, um, don't, don't have a reason to get upset with you or reprimand you. And then if you're finding yourself on the end where you're picking up other people's slack, it's really important for you to bring it to their attention, okay? So everyone can, you know, do what they're supposed to, to do without being a burden on other people with thorough and um, productive communication. Um, what I'm also sensing as well is, you know, um, Mercury retrograde is a good, um, it's a prime time to for us to make mistakes if we're not careful. I do see you distracted. I do see you dealing with a lot of communication and especially communicating with people that might be culturally uh, different from you. I do see a lot of fire signs here. Uh, fire signs are, you know, they're a little bit hot-headed and um, um, when they communicate, it might not be as thorough. So they're going to tell you, you know, things that they feel is important, but they're going to leave out details. And it's not because they're being ev evasive. It's because they think that's all there is to it. So there's a lot of phone tag that I see happening. There's a lot of, like, follow-up. And so make sure when they are in front of you, extract as much details as you can. Otherwise, when they're gone, it's going to be really time consuming for you to catch up with them and try to get further details. Okay, so fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. Um, I see many of you having a fire sign boss, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, and this person it's going to be like, where were you? What are you doing? And I feel like they're a little bit micromanaging you this month. They see you distracted and they're a little bit concerned. Um, bring your A-game to work. Bring your A-game to work, okay? Uh, create to-do lists. Make sure that you're on track and make sure that um, no one else needs to pick up the slack for you. Okay, because I feel like you're a little bit distracted. I don't understand why exactly. The other message that I'm getting here as well is they say cultural divide. Cultural divide. Um, basically, and I'm seeing this mainly in your social environment. So I feel like many of you Okay, so, so let's say this. You could be, you know, born and raised here, but your parents might be of a different culture. And so the communication, the, the lessons that they're trying to pass down to you might not be relevant because you're living in a different environment, you're living in a different culture. And then for others of you, you might, you know, have left the nest a long time ago. And you're dealing with people in a capacity where culturally they're different from you. So the things that they say, and even down to the fundamentals of how they communicate, it, it's kind of confusing, right? So the cultural divide message basically means that we don't have to agree with what people are saying. We just have to understand what they're saying so that we can help them. So I feel like that's what's happening here. It's not about, you know, uh, arguing over semantics. It's not about arguing over what's right and what's wrong. It's about getting to the bottom of things so that we're on the same page. So if you're in a capacity where you have to help somebody, you just need to establish that baseline. 
you need to establish and filter out what's important, what's not. So cross-cultural communication is really, really crucial for this month for you to be able to harmoniously do your work, um, harmoniously establish relationships with other people, and harmoniously just be able to, you know, have a smooth month. I do see as well a lot of interracial couples, um, and I feel like, you know, the blending of families is a little bit of a source of contention. Okay, so it's like you and your partner might be culturally different from each other, might be ethnically or even culturally different. And then you're attempting to, to kind of merge the cultural divide, you're, you're blending families together, and you're trying to decide, you know, how do we raise the kids? How do we educate them? What religion should they follow? Um, should we let mom, my mom and, or my dad babysit them, even though my mom and my dad speak a different language? Things like that. And I see like they're, they're kind of um, coming in and they're affecting a lot of different areas of your life. The home front, the relationship front, the communication front, the ninth house, which deals with ideas and philosophy. So they're affecting many, many sectors of your life. And the point here is that it doesn't need to be a problem. It can be woven in seamlessly into, you know, the fabric of your life. It just doesn't need to be a point of contention. But being a fixed sign, I know sometimes it's really difficult when people tell you what you should do, your automatic you know, defense mechanism goes up and you're just like, no, even if you know it's a good idea, even if you think it's a good idea, whatever they're telling you is a good idea. As long as they're telling you, your, your walls go up, your defensive um, stance goes up. And so, looking at what you're dealing with and establishing that baseline and, you know, um, I guess, like, learn as well to kind of uh, throw it back at the other person rather than take things lying down, okay? And uh, what I mean by that is if someone tells you, you should do this, you should do that, um, I, I feel like a lot of the times you guys kind of, um, you, you don't react to it or you don't really, you, I guess the, the, the way that you behave when someone does something that you don't like is that you don't call attention to it. So the right thing to do would be like, so why do you think I should do that? And then, you know, they'll go on explaining why they think you should do that. And then while they're doing that, you can definitely poke hole in their theories, okay? Like you can call them, call out on certain situations where you feel it's not appropriate. So do that, okay? So that it can create that discourse so that it opens that channel of communication, not only for you to prove them wrong, but also for you to understand further as to why they're telling you to do certain things. So aim to communicate a little bit more and as well aim to quicken your pace when it comes to the interaction and resolving problems and getting things done, okay? The, the majority of the month, it is going to be, you know, Mercury in retrograde, so communication will go awry. Um, if you can uh, shift gears, if something's broken and, you know, it's not going to get fixed, try to shift gears and, and, and shift your priorities and, and shift gears into something else. Work on another project. Work on another thing while this thing is getting fixed. Because I feel like technology, communication, or technology that facilitates the method of communication is going to be a little bit of a sore spot this month. It's going to be a source of frustration. So if you can find ways to get around that, then the rest of the month is going to be easy breezy. I do feel as well, um, I keep seeing, you know, property with you guys, needing to get your own space, needing to have your own freedom, and needing to have, you know, your own little refuge, your own little haven, and not having too many cooks in the kitchen. 
So it's really time to do that for many of you. You know, have your own space. Kick pe people out if you need to. If you've got like roommates that are not really carrying their weight. Try to you know wean them out of the, the home situation because I see that as a source of contention. I'm also feeling as well. There will be more opportunities overall this month for you to have like dinners, uh, birthdays, and and celebrations in the home front. So lots of opportunities for uh, wine and dining, having people over, and just you know having like a really good time overall in the uh, home environment. So entertaining guests at home, and you know. Um, having get-togethers and seeing people at home. So that's going to be something that you're really going to look forward to, and it, it looks very, very pleasant. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Okay, so relationships. Um, I have here a partner that is a little bit impatient, okay? And I have as well a partner that um, overall, it's almost like they say one thing and they mean another. So I feel it's really important for you to ask yourself, you know, is this really worth it anymore? Um, am I being, am I okay with being with a hypocrite? Or, you know, like, why is this person so inconsistent? I feel like there are going to be some issues coming up regarding, regarding lies and deception. And um, I feel like it's really important for you to kind of tell yourself enough's enough and just kind of work yourself out of this relationship. Uh, for those of you who are dating, for those who are dating, I feel a lot of opportunities coming back in, okay? So you're going to be, it's like you're not putting your life on hold anymore. You're going to get dressed up. You're going to want to go out more. And you're definitely going to want to be seen and heard and be put in an environment where you can meet more dynamic people. So I feel like if the month of March has been a little bit, um, if the month of, month of March has been a little bit quiet, April is going to be that catalyst to, you know, really spark off your social life and to bring a lot of good people into the fold. Um, they're saying as well, quality over quantity. So be careful about the quantity, okay? Um, make sure you see the proper value in people and make sure you actually invest the time being with the right people because, you know, you're going to be inundated with options, which is always nice. But life is too short to entertain, you know, the, the jester when you've got the queen, when you've got the king in your court, okay? Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, once again... Happy birthday. Please take care of yourself. Don't drink and drive. And, you know, um, maybe I'll be back for the mid-month reading. I'm not sure if I have time yet. But um, either way, I will talk to you guys soon. So take care of yourself, okay? And have a wonderful, blessed um, birthday season. Take care. Bye-bye.